In the previous few lectures, we discussed the heat engine and we said the heat engine is essentially a device that allows us to transform thermal energy into mechanical energy. It allows us to transform heat into work. Now, in the same way that we study the ideal gas to help us explain and understand the way that real gases behave, we study an ideal version of the heat engine known as the Carnot engine to help us understand the way that the heat engine actually functions. So the Carnot engine is an idealized version of the heat engine that uses a reversible cycle and a Carnot engine does not actually exist because a reversible cycle does not actually exist. So we study this idealized version of the heat engine known as the Carnot engine to help us explain the way the heat engine actually works. So let's define what a reversible cycle is. A reversible cycle is essentially a continuous cycle that utilizes reversible processes. And a reversible process is a process that is carried out infinitely slowly so that the entire process can be thought as consisting of a series of equilibrium states. Now this implies that the process can be carried out in reverse with no change in the quantity of work or heat exchanged. So a reversible process is essentially a process that takes us from the initial state and all the way around and back to that initial state. And the amount of work that it requires to go forward and reverse are exactly the same. So, a reversible cycle means that if we begin at some equilibrium state, let's say this point, the process will take us back to that same equilibrium state. And the amount of work that it requires to go in this direction and in reverse is exactly the same. Now, the reason a reversible cycle doesn't actually exist is because a reversible process is one that is done infinitely slowly, so that implies it requires an infinite amount of time and that's clearly impossible. So a Carnot engine doesn't actually exist in the same way that an ideal gas doesn't actually exist. Now let's examine the following diagram in which we're going to plot the Carnot engine, the Carnot cycle on the x-y axis where the x-axis is the volume and the y-axis is our pressure. Now any Carnot cycle is composed of four different processes. So let's suppose our initial position is point one. The first process takes us from point one to point two and that is an isothermal or isothermic process. Now going from position 2 to position 3, that's an adiabatic process. And notice in both of these processes, our gas expands because the volume increases as we go from left to right on the following xy plane. Now what about going from point 3 to point 4? Well when we go from point 3 to point 4, our gas is compressed and that is is an isothermic process and when we go from point 4 to point 1 that is once again an adiabatic process. So our Carnot cycle is composed of four different processes. Two of them are isothermic and two of them are adiabatic. So we go from point 1 to point 2 to point 3 to point 4 and back to our initial position to point 1. And this entire process is reversible. That means that the amount of work it takes to go from point one in this direction back to point one is the same amount of work that is that it takes to go from point one in reverse. So let's actually look in detail at each one of these processes. Let's suppose we go from point one to point two, that's an isothermic process, and let's call it process A. So in process A, the gas is expanded isothermically and reversibly, and let's suppose the temperature is given by TH, where H simply means high. 
Now, because our temperature remains constant during process A, the change in internal energy is zero, and that means heat given by QH is added into our system. Now, let's move on to part B. In step B, we have an adiabatic process taking place, and the gas is expanded, but now it's expanded adiabatic, adiabatically and reversibly, and now the the temperature drops from TH T high to TL T low. Now because we're dealing with an adiabatic process, no heat is exchanged. So no heat is exchanged and the change in internal energy is equal to the net work done. Let's move on to process C. Process C is once again an isothermic process and the gas is now compressed at constant temperature. Heat leaves the system and work is done on the system. And finally, let's move on to process D, which is once again an adiabatic process. Finally, the gas is compressed adiabatically and it returns to the initial state to position 1. No heat is exchanged and TL rises to TH. So notice the temperature at point 1 is the same as the temperature when we return to that same point 1. So once again, the Carnot cycle is an idealized cycle that essentially consists of four Four different processes. Two of them are isothermic and two of them are adiabatic. Now, notice that the work that it takes to go from this point to this point and to this point is simply given by taking the integral of this entire curve. And then the amount of work that it takes to go from 3 back to 4 and back to 1 is the integral of this lower region. So if we take the sum of those two regions, we get the following orange shaded region. And this is the net work that it takes to go from point 1 all the way back to point one.